Today I'm here with fellow YouTuber and best-selling author Mike Swigunski. He has worked and lived in over 85 countries as a digital nomad, so I thought why not ask him some questions and pick his brain a little bit today to bring you guys some quality information about being a digital nomad. So Mike, thank you so much for being in this video. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I'm looking forward to chatting travel and remote working and everything in between. So just to warm you up a bit, what do you think are some of the top digital nomad destinations for the year of 2021? So with the current global state of travel, a lot of different digital nomad locations are going to start coming up in popularity. And one of the biggest factors is going to be the digital nomad visas and remote work visas. So this is gonna kind of transition the way people travel because you know you don't wanna spend your whole time in quarantine for a few weeks. Uh, in that case, a lot of countries are making big changes to attract remote workers, digital nomads, and people to come for a little bit longer. Uh, so I see some of the big digital nomad locations like Tbilisi, Georgia, where they have a remote work visa where people can come up to a year. Uh, there's a lot of other new places like Croatia implementing remote work and digital nomad visas. A few other places like Bali are on the cusp of getting these visas out there so people can come for a longer term. And another big spot is going to be Mexico and Brazil. Both of these places are not necessarily uh, attracting tourists and travelers with digital nomad visas, but because of their regulations, they're making it really easy to just kind of go there, show up, and stay for an extended period of time. There's a lot of things open and stuff. So it's gonna be really interesting. I think these kind of main areas are gonna be the, the next new hubs but it's really gonna depend on what type of traveler, what people are looking for uh, in a location. But there's still gonna be a lot of travel out there. It's just gonna be a little bit shifted and hopefully a little bit more sustainable long-term. We consider ourselves digital nomads and we're here in Tbilisi, Georgia. So, I mean, I guess we can say it's an awesome place to be right now, especially with what's going on in the world. Yeah, I've, I've been super grateful to be kind of Brought to Georgia, we came here for a few months initially, but we ended up staying here for a year. And I honestly couldn't have picked a better place to get kind of stuck during all this. It's been a really good place to kind of explore the, our own backyard here. There's so many beautiful places to see, the cost of living and internet. It kind of checks every box for what I look for in a digital nomad destination. Good expat crowd, good local crowd. And the, the cost of living is, is absolutely really good. Like your, your dollar goes really far here. So Mike, I found you through YouTube. Love your channel. Um, do you mind telling uh, the audience a little more about your channel and also what you do for work? Yeah, so if you're looking to check out my channel, you can get a really good grasp of the videos I make and the content I'm creating at Mike Swigunski. We'll put some details below in the description, but I'm primarily focusing on three main pieces of content. So it's gonna be travel hacking and tips. This is gonna be anything from getting free and discounted flights with credit cards or just booking really cheap uh, flights and hotels. Then I'm gonna focus on other travel content like destination reviews, places I love to travel. That's kind of the one pillar. The second pillar is gonna be online business entrepreneurship. So I've helped build some really large remote companies from five people to around 80 people uh, fully remote. And I'm talking about the online business entrepreneurship space with how to make money online, how to buy and sell online businesses. That would be the second pillar. And then the last pillar is gonna be everything location independent. So be building an online business is gonna be part of that, remote working from different destinations. So it's kind of a triangle of all these content and I'm trying to figure out what people like the most, make content about that, because for me it's all about creating valuable content for you as a viewer. So if you are interested in one vertical, let me know in the comments below and uh, you know, I'll make some content on, on what you're interested in. Yeah, I'll let you know right now that I'm gonna be watching some of your credit card videos because it's not always easy doing finances when you're traveling so much. Yeah, I think the credit card stuff's super interesting because essentially when I was started traveling, I couldn't afford to travel long term. And so I figured out the credit card hacking and basically I've been able to crack the code uh, for the past 10 years. I've earned, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in free travel opened up more than 20 different credit cards and have zero dollars in debt. I have an 815 credit score. So it is possible to do this over a sustainable period of time. And that's one of the topics that I'm gonna be talking about a lot is how you can build credit safely, build up your credit over a long period of time while getting some free travel in the mix. So 
So Mike, I know there are a lot of people watching that want to become a digital nomad, but they don't know exactly where to start or what website they should be checking. Um, do you have any advice on what are the best websites to find remote work? Yeah, so I, when I first started writing my book, I noticed there was a bit of a gap in the market. There was essentially a lot of remote jobs for developers, coding, uh, all those type of like technical positions. And after kind of researching the market, I noticed that there's a big gap between technical jobs and non-technical jobs. So I've kind of highlighted a list and created two of my own job boards that primarily focus on non-technical remote jobs. So this is gonna be anything from content creation, sales, marketing, and these are gonna be all legitimate companies that are going to pay you a full-time or part-time salary. And they're gonna be a little bit more flexible on the location that you're gonna be living in. So my personal job board that I built is called globalcareer.io. And we focus about 80% of our jobs are gonna be non-technical remote jobs. The second job board that I own is called remotejobsnow.com. That's gonna have a little bit more mix of remote jobs uh, for technical and non-technical. I'd say it's about a 50-50 split. Three other great places to find remote jobs are going to be dynamitejobs.com. Uh, instead of competing with thousands of people, a lot of these are small online remote businesses. Maybe there's five to 10 employees at the company. So you have a lot better chance of getting jobs with these companies because you're not competing with thousands of other people. Uh, LinkedIn is another great place. They've updated their search criteria so you can actually filter by remote jobs. Uh, and then you can filter on what type of category and what type of interest you're looking in. And then lastly is one of the biggest remote job boards out there is called We Work Remotely and they have everything from programming to uh, non-technical remote jobs. Perfect, um, because I actually work as an English teacher, but um, it's really not my passion. So I'm definitely gonna be looking at these websites to see if I can branch out and yeah. diversify somehow. I'm curious, wh where did you find your job? Um, that's actually a good question. I think I found it just uh, by word of mouth, actually, just okay. kind of traveling and talking to people, seeing how they were able to match travel and um, personal finance. Yeah, that's definitely a, a important note is like, even during this time, it's harder to the network with people, but building your personal network when you don't need it is the most important thing. I see a lot of people out there that like, oh man, I need a job like tomorrow. And they haven't spent the past six to 12 months building their network. And if you're approaching somebody with, hey, I need a job. I, my name's Mike, I need a job. Most people aren't gonna be as receptive to that because they don't know you. They're, they're not willing to really help you. So you need to start building your network and essentially networking is just relationship building, building a network of good relationships with people. And once you've established that, it's going to be a lot more, they're going to be a lot more willing to help you out with finding a job or anything else along the way. So Mike, I know that you've traveled to over 85 countries around the globe. I just took one look at your Instagram and it's pretty easy to see that. So I'm actually pretty curious as someone that has traveled a lot myself, uh, which place would you love to go back to? I know that picking countries is not something we like doing. It's almost like picking your favorite child. Yeah. But so I'm just gonna ask you, which country would you like to go back to? Yeah, that's a good question. So I would preface by starting off saying that if you're gonna be a long-term digital nomad, a lot of people have this misconception that you're going to be, you know, every month you're going to be going to a new location. And sometimes that's good for three months, six months. But when I've been doing this for more than a decade, you need to find some sort of hub. So there's places that I would love to go back to as traveling and places that I would love to go back to as living. So one of those destinations, this was one of the first digital nomad destinations that I went to was Prague in the Czech Republic. And I moved there for about two years. I absolutely love the city. One of the things I loved most about living in Prague was it was so centrally located. I could hop on a train, I could be in Munich, I could be in Berlin, I could be in Budapest, all within 48 hours of hopping on a train. So there's so many international destinations you get to really cheaply by train, by car, by plane. Uh, so that was one of the things I loved. And it's also, I'm really into photography. You can check out my Instagram at Swig Meets World. And I just loved living in Prague because every street you go around, even after two years, you find some beautiful places in your own backyard. And I'm just like blown away. It's, it's literally like a fairy tale land. And then when you factor in that uh, beer is cheaper than water there, it really is, <laughs> really is a good mixture. And the, the Czech people were lovely. I was working there at a, teaching finance at a international university. And I just had a good mixture of local community, expat community. And I, I just found like that was a really, it was a great place to be based as a digital nomad. 
because it, it just checks so many boxes for me. So I would say that's a, a place for, for revisiting. Is that the place you spent most time as a digital nomad or was it somewhere else? So I would say the place that I actually physically was at the most was in South America in Medellin, Colombia. So around two and a half years in Colombia, but in Europe and Prague, I was there for about uh, around two years. So I've kind of noticed like looking through my timeline, two years is kind of where I've had that hubs. Like I've had hubs in Europe. I was in South Korea for two years, in Australia, New Zealand for around a year total. Uh, and then hopefully here, you know, Tbilisi, I think we've kind of found this place is like, we love it. It checks everything that we've been looking for as a digital nomad destination. Uh, the one year visa process is kind of the main thing, but it just checks so many boxes for us that I think Tbilisi is going to be our, our forever digital nomad hub, but we'll see what happens, you know. So apart from the one year visa that they offer us, uh, were there any other things that brought you here to Georgia? You know, when I first heard about Georgia was I was actually living in Prague and I shared an office with a guy from Georgia and he's just like, the wine's good, the, you know, the place is nice, but he, he was just always like talking about it. I, I never really looked into it too much, but it was always kind of in the back of my mind. But then when we were in Colombia, uh, a, a couple that we're friends with mentioned, just go on Airbnb, check the prices of Airbnbs in Tbilisi. And, you know, they're like one fifth the price of what we were paying in Colombia for you know just as nice places in the center of the city and once we checked that we were like we we're hooked we're like we got to go check it out see if it lives up to all the hype and it definitely does so i would say the the cost of living or the geo arbitrage you know went the dollar just goes so far here that you're really able to elevate your lifestyle at a fraction of the cost so it's that it's the the expat community the local community the food it's just all these different things once we were in medellin like we kind of ran out of stuff to do within a month. Like there, it is a great place. And if there's a lot of good activities, depending on what you're into, but past that, like Georgia, we have a, an ongoing list of stuff we want to see and do. And even in Tbilisi, there's so many museums and stuff that there's just so much more to do here. Uh, there's like beautiful parks and it just kind of fits what we're looking for. And I think everyone's going to be looking for something different. So personally, we, we love it here. So changing subjects a little, I recently started doing some design work for the print-on-demand websites. Um, and I'm pretty happy with the results so far. I'm just kind of starting off, but it's growing exponentially. Um, so I was wondering if there are any other forms of passive incomes that you find most effective. Yeah, so I really love front-loading work. So building something that might take a few months. And then once you've built it, you can kind of just put it on autopilot, maintain it. So I would say the two things that come to mind for beginners is if you're, if you're a good writer, if you enjoy writing, then creating blog content. And this isn't necessarily gonna be something that you love. It might be finding a niche that might be boring, writing about toilets or bidets. And then your whole website is about bathroom equipment. Uh, those niches are gonna make a lot more money and they might be kind of boring to write about, but it might be a lot less competitive than if you're writing about uh, another topic like workout gear or something like that. So building a niche affiliate website that you can monetize with Amazon Associates, or you can monetize with AdSense or any other type of ad network like Mediavine, those are gonna be the easiest because you can create the content on a certain topic, but you need to spend at least you know two to three weeks doing keyword research on that subject and on that niche, then figuring out if that's gonna be competitive and easy for you to rank on Google for those terms. So. It can be a little complicated, but that's probably the easiest thing to get started with because you don't need a lot of capital to get started. You just need to build a website, write the content yourself. If you don't, if you have enough capital, you can outsource the content to a writer and then that's it. You can focus on building links to your website, getting it to rank high on Google and then go from there. So if you're not into writing, if that doesn't sound like a good fit, I would say, you know, like the, the path you're going down with creating designs on Amazon Merch, which is a similar to Teespring where you can upload designs, figure out which ones work and which ones don't. But for a, around a hundred designs that you create, and I'm sure you're probably realizing this, there's probably only gonna be maybe five that really take off. That's right. So you really kind of can test the market. And I, I would say for your, your position, you should take those five designs that are doing really well and put them on different platforms because you know they're already kind of proven and tested. Um, so find one sort of platform, either Amazon Merch or Teespring or which platform are you using? Yeah, so I use Redbubble and TeePublic. Okay, so all these are good places to get started. Just pick two of them to get started with 
and test the designs on those, see which ones really take off, and then take those five designs that are the top, top money makers and add them to other networks. Mike, I was watching one of your videos on your channel and you mentioned a term called geo-arbitrage that I didn't even really know existed, but I also have been doing that for a while, I found out. Um, so can you tell us a little more about the concept behind that term? Yeah, so I think Tim Ferriss made the term popular. I don't think he invented it, but he was the one who kind of made it really famous in this kind of digital nomad community and online entrepreneur community. Essentially, it means elevating your lifestyle by taking advantage of currencies. So if you're earning US dollars, living in Mexico, earning in dollars, spending in pesos, you can elevate your lifestyle to a much higher level for a fraction of the cost. That's the simple explanation. And I think in the States, a lot of people are realizing, hey, I can earn a New York City salary, but I can move to Missouri, keep that salary, and you know save 70% of my income instead of 10% while living in New York City. It's essentially the same concept, but there's a lot of other benefits for living overseas. And the biggest benefit is taxes. So earning US income, you can, get, uh, you can be eligible for foreign earned income exclusion, which is essentially up to $105,000 of non-taxable income. So if you're living overseas, and there's two ways you can be eligible for this, the first way is living overseas for 330 days. So that's why I limit my time in the US to under 30 days. So I'm eligible for this. So this FEIE is an official IRS tax incentive. It's not even a gray area. You can go on IRS's website and find more information about this. The second way you can be eligible for this is if you have a second residency. So it's fairly easy to get residency here in a country like Georgia. And if you do that, once you're able to prove that you have that residency, you can spend a little bit more time in the United States. So that's one of the bigger incentives. And so essentially, when I, when I file taxes, I'm getting paid an extra $20,000 to not live in the United States on top of taking advantage of earning US dollars and spending in local currency. So there's so many more incentives. And essentially, I get to walk home and keep more of my hard earned money um, because I'm not spending time in the United States. So there is a lot of gray areas, and if you're gonna be spending time locally in another country, you might fall under their tax laws, but usually if you're spending three to six months in a country, you're kind of in this gray area, gray area where you won't have to pay taxes. But just a caveat, make sure, this is not financial advice, make sure to check with a CPA or accountant before you go ahead and, and make these big life choices about where you're gonna live and, and not. So we know that the quality of life here in Georgia is pretty good. The bang for buck is amazing. Are there any other countries that you've spent some time in that you think is comparable to the life that you live here and also where you're able to maybe save some more money for travel? Yeah, so I would say Georgia's kind of a hidden gem. The closest destinations that even come remotely close are gonna be places like Chiang Mai in Thailand, maybe even Bali, you can find some pretty good accommodations there. Yeah, so Chiang Mai is, there's definitely a mix of tourists and expats there. I'd say they have, it's kind of the digital nomad mecca in a sense. So it's got a lot of things. The differentiator for Tbilisi, Georgia is you get the European lifestyle and culture, but you get Southeast Asian pricing for even, you know, you get a European style accommodation, the apartments and homes are gonna be much bigger compared to Asia. So I would say, there's nothing really a direct comparison. Maybe a place, some places in Ukraine or, or maybe some other places in Eastern Europe, but I would say Tbilisi, Georgia is kind of a one of a kind, at least from my experience. Mike, if there is someone out there who wants to become a digital nomad tomorrow, I know that's not always the easiest thing to do, but what first step can they take in that direction? Yeah, so normally what I would ask if, if somebody's like, hey, I wanna be a digital nomad as soon as possible, I would ask them, do you like what you're currently doing? Do you like your job that you have right now? And the second question would be, could you potentially transition that job to being remote? The, the whole world's kind of realizing that it's pretty easy to take your office job and turn it into remote. And a lot of times the fastest way is to just convince your current employer to allow you to work from anywhere to work remotely, making sure those expectations are clear from the front that you're still gonna get your work done. It might just be on a little bit more flexible schedule. If they say no to that, then you can also try to negotiate down your salary, you can try to negotiate down some other things where uh, you can essentially try to build it and say, hey, if you don't agree to this, I'm just gonna be putting in my two weeks notice. But I wouldn't tell them that right away. Uh, I would say 
essentially you should probably, if they say no to that, then start looking for a flexible or remote job. That's gonna be the fastest way to get started. I would say the normal progression is this. Remote working is gonna be the fastest way to become a digital nomad. This is gonna be with finding a job, teaching English online, uh, maybe working for a startup company as a remote employee. The second sort of progression is gonna be with freelancing. You know, this is gonna be utilizing platforms like upwork.com. Once you've kind of spent a few years, you know, working as a remote employee, maybe you have some skill sets that you can put onto the freelancing network and get paid a side hustle or other income. And then third, once you've built up some capital, um, you can jump into entrepreneurship, like building your own uh, products, building your own websites and stuff like that. So I'd say that's the normal progression. And a lot of times, if you just jump from straight into entrepreneurship, you're not gonna have the right skill sets. You're not gonna have enough capital to make it sustainable. So that's why I recommend building a side hustle, getting a remote job and working on a side hustle. So that way you can build some extra income. And once, once it reaches a certain level, once you're making you know, even substantially more money or the same amount of money that you're making at your day job, then you can consider going into that side hustle full time. But it really depends on what you're comfortable with. If, you're, if you hit that certain threshold where you know you can go all in on your side hustle and really scale it, then that's the level, that's the jumping off point. Great advice. Mike, I wanna thank you for all the questions you've answered here today. I think you're gonna help a lot of people that are watching right now. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. If you guys need any help or advice, I do answer DMs, I do answer messages and emails. Check out my channel, make sure to subscribe. It's Mike Swigunski on YouTube, Swig Meets World on Instagram. And again, slide in the DMs, I guarantee I'll, I'll give you a response. Uh, I try to help out as many people as possible. And if you're looking for some more help, you can check out my best-selling book called Global Career, How to Work Anywhere and Travel Forever, and you can pick up a copy on Amazon. Thanks so much, guys, and uh, looking forward to, to connecting with some of you. If you are looking to become a digital nomad fast, Mike also has a playlist called How to Become a Digital Nomad Fast. Very convenient, right? So you can just head on over there right now by clicking on this link that is on your screen, and Mike will see you over there in three, two, one.